everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. Two teams will need their quarterbacks to step up and lead their offenses on the gridiron today. It's Dak Prescott's Cowboys going up against Bortles' Jaguars. Larry, first opened in 1995. There's a look inside Everbank Field here in the River City of Jacksonville, Florida. A few minutes prior to us coming on air, this crowd was jolted into action with the introduction of these Jaguars. They're set for football as the Jags are ready to match up with Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. This is fielded at the goal line. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. some space up to about the 25. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. 2017 for Zeke Elliott, a mixed bag. Would he play? Would he not play? Well, he missed the six games from weeks 10 to 15. He still finished, though, Charles, 10th in the league in Russia. Just tells you about the talent that he has and how explosive he is and what he brings to the table. Look, he averaged 98 yards per game, 98.3 to be exact. A full 11 yards higher than number two Todd Gurley behind him. So that just tells you, if he plays a full season and he's averaging that type of yardage, I think Dallas's win numbers go up. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. The give is to Elliott. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. On second down, Elliott. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. Kind of running there at your own risk against that 4-3 in that big line, aren't you? Yeah, and I don't really run it against a good 4-3 team that well because I've got to get those guys on the move a little bit. If you're a static running team, meaning you just want to run it in the middle, you may have some trouble against good defensive tackles. That's what we just saw in that. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Malik Jackson with a big-time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. Okay, look at this. The punt team nowhere to be found. They're on the sidelines. Offense going to go for this on the opening drive. They're indeed going for it. It's Prescott. And they hit him as he throws as this one's going to go straight down to the turf. Incomplete. A surprising move here on the opening drive of the game. And the Jags take over in terrific field position. Bortles now on first down. And his first look is incomplete. The veteran tight end, Mercedes Lewis, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it. And he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Slings one that's incomplete. He was looking to get it to Allen Hearns that time. And it's third down. The turnover put him in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. you got to cash in and get some points. Throwing now is Bortles. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. And 
and Lambo will put this one through, and the Jaguars grab a 3-0 lead. So they had great field position, but a three-play drive that actually goes backwards, and then they kick the field goal. I think the key sequence in there, the key phrase you just gave us, a three-play drive, had the momentum, great field position, unable to move the football. Fielded about a yard deep. <laughs> but conventional football, football 101, tells us if you don't get it back to the 20-yard line on a kickoff return, that's a disappointment. But some of these team special teams coaches, with approval by the head coach, they give them full authority to go ahead and bring it out and try to be aggressive. Almost what we call the green light, red light theory. Green light means go, red light means stop. Looks like he had green on that play. And he'll go down after losing yardage at the 10. It's a loss of five there, bringing up second. Every year I go to the combine, I marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs. And let's face it, they know how to finish plays, too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. Yannick Ngakwe in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. I think most quarterbacks would love to have the goal line actually extend up into the air and turn into a wall. And they can put their back against it and know exactly where they are on the field so they don't end up in the end zone. Didn't do it on that play, but perilously close to the goal line. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Dak and the offense still out there. They are going to go for it. On fourth, they do snap it to Prescott. Complete to Jason Witten. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. 30 yards on the pickup there. And that leads to a Dallas first down. A give to Elliott. And he'll be limited to a short gain up to about the 34-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far. And after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going. And really, the offensive line not helping him much. They go to Elliott again. And the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. And it's going to lead him to third down. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. The quarterback's like, oh, Elliott going to be hit. He coughs it up. Loose football. And the Jags grab it. The 40. Pass the 20. 10. 5. And he'll take this one in for a Jags touchdown. Even the great ones, some of the best, they're not immune to the fumble, and here it really hurts them. If the ball gets away from any runner's body, that's when the defense pokes at it, swipes at it, swats at it, and finds a way to create a big play for themselves. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. But before the possession switches here, I had written down that I wanted to talk about some of the awards this past season in the NFL. We know Brady was the MVP, but Todd Gurley, Offensive Player of the Year. How about that for a bounce back? Many were questioning whether he'd had a sophomore slump the season before. Didn't even get to 1,000 yards. Was a dominant force in 2017. How about his teammate Aaron Donald on yeah. the defensive side? He took home Defensive Player of the Year award. Yeah, very impressive. They had both sides of the ball. Sean McVay deserving, I think you would agree, of Coach of the Year. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what he did for the Rams when they went from last in the league in scoring to leading the league in scoring and winning a division title. And how about the New Orleans Saints, Rookie of the Year, offense and defense. Alvin Kamara on offense, Marshawn Lattimore on defense. A second down throw for Prescott. And this one caught by Des Bryant. And he's out of bounds, able to take this one up to the 35. Prescott fighting his big receiver, Bryant, there for a Cowboy first down.
first and ten. Prescott. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Miles Jack, the outside linebacker, drops him for a loss of six. Prescott now on second down. Try to lay one up deep. And that's caught inside the 35. Touchdown, Cowboys. Terrence Williams, 71 yards. And the Cowboys have cut it to within a score. It took them a while to get their speedster involved, but they found him downfield there. And what we've discovered as we've watched games is the speedster doesn't have to have a lot of catches, doesn't have to have volume in order to have a huge impact on the game. His speed scares the heck out of defenses, and other guys can capitalize, but when you finally hit him and he carries it all the way into the end zone, that's what you're paying him for, that big threat that can make big plays on a limited number of catches. That's how you step on the stage with your first catch. Take And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race, and it's a Jacksonville touchdown. I know a lot of special teams coaches, they just want to keep it away from him because that's what he can do. And others have egos that their players can't keep up with. And they say, challenge him, kick it to him. The way he runs as fast as he is, I wouldn't challenge him at all. I'd do everything possible to keep it away. He is just a blur when he gets a full head of steam, and he got a full head of steam there. That a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. Before the offense changes hands here, let's look back to the Super Bowl February 5th. What a game. And I know you were there calling it offensively, though. Impressive on both sides. It certainly was, and let's face it, if you're in Minnesota, it's cold outside, but you talk about the offenses, they heated up in a big way. And how about Nick Foles? The backup quarterback turned MVP. 373 yards, three touchdowns, and of course, the big one receiving on the Philly Special. Quite a story. As you and I were talking about off-air, it was just a fluid game. Not a lot of penalties, just really clean play. Exactly the type of game the NFL needed for the audiences at home watching the game. And of course, Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Yannick Ngakwe in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. Third and long for Prescott. He's got the connection to Cole Beasley. It'll be a pickup of 13, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. Got to be careful here. They need to move quickly, but it's also fourth. They're going to try and throw. And it is incomplete. So certainly an interesting call there to go for it. And that will force a turnover on downs. Jags taking over on offense here in a second. And what a season, Charles, it was for Jacksonville. Some people did like them as a dark horse coming into the year, and they really responded. Heard recently at one of the, you know, all-star games, college all-star games, a scout saying, well, heck, haven't they been the dark horse for the last five years coming into the season? And he seemed a little bit bitter, so I'm going to let him go on that one. But the point is well taken. They have been building towards this. Really good draft, really supplemented in free agency. And, yeah, they were a dark horse, but they played awfully well. 11 wins, two more in the playoffs. I think right now they'd love to get Allen Robinson back at wide receiver and add another playmaking tight end. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and it'll be second and about a yard. From the gun, it's Bortles. This will be caught at about the six. And I think the ball's out. And that will get out of bounds. Lucky there. They keep possession inside the five. Now I have to admit, partner, that I've often thought that I don't like this rule. Where the offensive player fumbles the ball and goes out of bounds. And they get to keep. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. A great effort there as the first half is winding down. And the Jaguars add on to their lead. I heard a coach talk about those late-in-the-half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. He said those could be the ones that could finish off a squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. So the football switching hands here in just a second. And, you know, Tom Brady, just to go off on a tangent for a second, may have lost the Super Bowl. But third MVP this past season and what he did at age 40, really something. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. 
Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Second down, Prescott. And that is incomplete. Two seconds left on the clock. And attempted a deep ball there. They didn't get it. But boy, they're going to need a few of those to actually hit in order to get back into this game. Good thing they do have a little bit of time here still left in the contest. Decent sized deficit, but not one that they can't manage. Dancing to his left. Now he's going to let it go deep back over the middle. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. A very interesting call and one that backfires. I know they're losing, Charles, but boy, to start the second half with the onside kick, risky. Felt like a sense of urgency from their side, coupled with, you and I both know the special teams coordinators. They sell their key plays each and every week to the head coach, don't they? And I'll guarantee he's been selling this one. We can get it, coach, we can get it. And that came together with that sense of urgency you talked about. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. But has not been the best game for him. But he definitely tried to get by with a little help from his friend there, trying to create a big play. Couldn't do it, fell incomplete. But you're right, hasn't been a better game here in the second half, just trying to get going. Big thing is trying to keep confidence up and continue to fire. He'll check this one off to Fournette. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Seven yards on the play, and they're going to have a third down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height. Sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does, because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback who has to slide and find open space to throw. Here we go now. On first down, Bortles. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. Marquise Lee, the intended target. That'll bring up second down. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. On second down, here's Fournette. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. They get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. And Leonard Fournette impressing there with that run. It's hard to believe that no Jacksonville Jaguar has broken 1,000 yards since Maurice Jones drew in 2011. And Leonard Fournette could be that guy. Even with the ankle injury last year at LSU, still averaged six and a half yards per carry. And absolutely intimidated opposing defenses. A lot of guys simply didn't want to tackle him. You give him five yards there, and it's enough for the first. Shotgun now for Bortles. Being chased out left, and he's got his big receiver, Robinson, for the Jacksonville touchdown. Allen Robinson, a 12-yard touchdown grab, and the Jaguars had six to their lead. And the lead will grow by one more. Here's Lambeau out to kick this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half 
other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give them a new set of downs. Prescott on first down. Looking deep downfield. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Sometimes we wonder about play calls, but this one made perfect sense to me. He's got the only touchdown that they've scored in this game. Tried to get it to him again on another deep ball. Here's Prescott. For the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. First down, Prescott. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off here by Aaron Colvin. Look at this spin. Balance. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. Tonight's matchup features two quarterbacks who will be trying to lead their team to victory. It's Burles' it's Jaguars going up against Ryan's Falcons. All right, Larry, thank you very much. We are pleased, as always, to be bringing you coverage of the National Football League presented by EA Sports. A few moments ago, it was Desmond Trufant of the Falcons making their way out of the tunnel to the delight of this sold-out crowd as his guys get set to do battle with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. Now Ryan. 
On first down. Trying to set up the screen, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 21. And his guys are going to take over at the 21-yard line. Brandon, when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach and talked about how they wanted to begin this game offensively, they talked about their script, didn't they? 10 to 15 plays, the first 10 to 15 they had on their script. Nowhere on the script was there throwing an interception, I have to believe. A solid pickup of 13 sets him up first and goal. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play, but what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. carry for Leonard Fournette and that'll get him halfway there as he takes it from the six to the three yard line this is kind of one of those in between plays here Charles on third and goal from the two or the three in that area what do you dial up something quick hitting you don't have the time for something that develops slowly it's got to be right at them if you're going to run the football and if you're going to throw it something quick get it out of your hands in a hurry now Bortles and he's got his big receiver, Robinson, for the Jacksonville touchdown. Allen Robinson from three yards out. And the Jags have taken the early lead. And this is up and good. The score now 7-0 Jaguars. Here's Lambeau out to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. I want to give a hat tip real quick, Charles, to J.J. Watt before the possession switches here. Walter Payton, NFL Man of the Year. They totaled up how much he helped raise for hurricane relief, $37 million. Incredible. Hurricane Harvey, which really hit the Houston area in a big way, and his original bet was $200,000. So <laughs> congratulations to J.J. Watt and all the people who participated. And Greg Olson of the Panthers, Benjamin Watson of the Ravens, both tight ends, also nominated and finalists for the most prestigious award as determined by the NFL, the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. Second down, just one yard to go. Here's Ryan to throw. He completes it to Julio Jones. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. Give him 30 yards there. And the offense lining up first and 10. They'll run for the first time with Devontae Freeman. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Second down following the run. Now Ryan, into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 17, and this one will be brought back to the 22.
everybody, I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Tonight's matchup features two quarterbacks who will be trying to lead their team to victory. It's Brady's Patriots going up against Bortles' Jaguars. Well, Larry, with a side of fans splashing in pools behind the end zone, we can only be in one place. That's Everbank Field in Jacksonville, Florida. This crowd excited to see their Jaguars as both teams emerge from their tunnels a moment ago. We are just about ready for football as the Jags get set to match up with Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. This is taken about seven yards deep. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Shifty Deion Lewis. And he takes this one all the way across midfield into enemy territory down to the 40 yard line. A big chunk of yardage there, 37 yards. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. They try again with Lewis. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. they got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Brady gives this one to Lewis. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. In motion left here, one of their tight ends. Here's Brady. Looking for Gronkowski, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 28. And they finally put it into this return, but not before he's all the way down to the 37. Certainly not how they envisioned ending their opening drive here in the first quarter. Too many ones in this play. First quarter, first drive, first interception thrown. And that last one, that hurts. CD, I want to get your thoughts on some potential free agents this offseason before we change the possession here. Now, caution, many of these guys. The Pats are going to get there. Down he goes. Oh, my goodness. Was that a defensive back that got to him with the pressure? <laughs> oh, look at the former defensive back. You're, you're all smiles up here. I hope everybody can hear my smile on that play. On second down, here's Bortles. Bearing it out for Hearns. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Remember, there was some question about whether Malcolm Butler would still be wearing a New England Patriots uniform in 2017. He is, and it showed up there as he helped defend against the deep ball. And no press coverage here. They are backing off in the secondary. On third and long, it's Bortles. And he's got it to Hearns. And they're able to get this one down to the 25. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. Here comes the D swarming to the line. Now Bortles. He finds Ivory here. Another nice gain. 13 yards that time and another first down. Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backside of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, 
Hey, we got everybody cut. Oh, he just snuck out there, and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? And they were able to do that there. Nice pickup on first down. Now we go now. On the ground, this is Leonard Fournette, and he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it leads to a first and goal. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only the control and things right below. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Jacksonville. A great play there. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Jags have taken the early lead. And this is up and good. The score now 7-0 Jaguars. Here's Lambeau out to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The runner-up New England Patriots offense back onto the field. And I wanted to get your thoughts on the offense for this crew as they go into 2018. How do they stack up, Charles? Typically, New England, pretty darn stable. One of the goals going into the offseason was to try and hold on to running back Deion Lewis because coupled with James White, that's a heck of a tandem. Of course, the big fella, Kronk. You know, you find him another all-pro year in 2017. And remember, before 2017 began, they picked up Brandon Cooks in a trade at wide receiver. That paid off in a big way. He had his third straight 1,000-yard season in the NFL. And then, of course, there's Danny Amendola, Chris Hogan, and they expect to get back Julian Edelman for all of 2018 coming off of a knee injury. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? So they got him coming up from his linebacker spot. And sometimes the position designation really doesn't matter. If you creep up to the line of scrimmage, you just have to look for the football. Make sure it moves before you do. The defense helps the offense out there. Now five yards to go on first down. Again, it's Lewis, and he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Now, that play was doomed right from the start. He just about ran into every defender on that one, didn't he? It felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle. This is Lewis. And not much room to operate as he'll get this up only to about the 41. Just a one-yard pick up there, and it's going to make it third down at six. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. They'll bring a tight end in motion left. Throwing is Brady on third down. And that is intercepted on the sideline. Wait, no. They'll say no. It was caught out of bounds. So this is just an incompletion here. On fourth down on now is the lefty Ryan Allen to punt. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. The Jaguars offense now heads back onto the field. And certainly they'll be hoping to hit pay dirt like they did on the last drive. Got the football back, so a chance to go up two scores. And they haven't been tentative at all in this ball game because sometimes you start a game with your script to try and get information out of the opposing defense. How will they play you in certain situations? Sometimes you script to attack, and that's what I'm seeing so far. Again, it's Fournette. Up past the 25 to the 26, a gain of five. He had had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Now they run with a backup. It's Chris Ivory, and he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. 
The gain of four that time as the drive continues. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it here. Why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. They'll run it again with Fournette. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. So here we go, first and 10 now. Portals on the give to Fournette. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. Really tough drive, but that run helped salvage something there because now there's something positive that came out of it. They got to see good blocking, good push by the offensive line, wide receivers trying to get involved, a good run by the back. And now maybe it'll be a catalyst for them to look at going forward, watching it on tape. Maybe they can keep incorporating that type of a run into their offense. Fournette, a first down carry. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Now that's the type of play that will fire up a defense, hold them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all or if they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. Now they'll throw it. Bortles. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Robinson. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Zone. It's Bortles. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. And plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. To throw. It's Bortles. Incomplete, and we're down to eight seconds now. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things, but once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. From the gun on third down, Bortles. And that will be incomplete. Four ticks left here on the clock. The strong windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. First half in the books. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we welcome you back live now inside the booth alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, set and ready to rock for the third quarter. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. That's fielded in the end zone. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Out come the Jaguars now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on. Here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys. He's got a man complete. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. And some extras coming up on the line here, Redding for the blitz. On first and ten, here's Bortles. He's going to fire one deep up, and this is caught inside the five. Touchdown, Jaguars! Allen Robinson, 44 yards, and the Jaguars add on to their lead. He's got it, and it's 17-0. Here's Lambeau out to kick this one away. 
This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. So here are the Patriots now. They get ready for their first possession of half number two. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working, and call more of that. And he finds Danny Amendola. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. And a nice gain of 21 yards. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he might have got this across midfield, not by much. They'll mark it down at the 49. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. The Patriot passing game is rolling. They've got another first down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. And that's another stop for the defense, something we've seen all game long. They have been on fire today. No matter what's called by the offense, they've had an answer for it. They run. This is Lewis. And tough sledding. You know, again, maybe a yard. Stop short of the 35. But well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. Now Brady. Incomplete. He had his hands on it but couldn't pick it. But it's now fourth down. Let's face it. If you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Well, I guess they figure they got to start taking some chances. Here's a big one in this third quarter as he'll go for it on fourth down. They'll go for it. It's Brady. Got a man complete. It's Chris Hogan. And unable to break away, they stop him a few yards shy. The Patriots come up empty on fourth down. And the Jaguars are going to take possession here on the turnover on downs. Go left, go left. Here we go now. Three, two, three. Throwing on first down is Bortles. And he goes down. It's a Patriot sack. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get across the 20, but only to about the 22-yard line. Call it a three-yard gain, but they'll be forced into a third and 15 coming up third quarter and you've got the lead you're not ready to go into that four minute offense to close the game out but a running game can really benefit your team right now working from the gun it's Bortles flush to his right and it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. A third down, he tried to stay in bounds, did all he could. He caught it, but was led a little bit too far. Yeah, and that's always difficult, isn't it? Because you know half of your body is trying to stay behind while the other half is reaching out, trying to catch the football. The top half worked. It was the bottom half that was in question. And some big-time hitting going on there. He is knocked to the ground right around the 26. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. Right, guys, 
And some changes here as the D-line separates some. They'll start things on first down with Deion Lewis. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 14 yards is the pickup there in a New England first down. For so many years, I was convinced it was a myth, you know, because you always hear about the smaller running back. Like, it's lost. You can't find him, and sometimes that's part of his genius. But it's true. You get behind big offensive linemen, the defensive... Oh, and Lewis lost the football, and the Jags grab it. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. He didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. Now he'll escape to his right. And he's taken down, trying to do a little too much, getting outside of the pocket, and that results in a sack. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. A handoff, Fournette running left. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. Back now in Jacksonville. It's Jaguar football here, and they'll look to extend their lead as we begin quarter number four. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and a mile. Here we go now. Go, go, go. From the gun, it's Bortles. It's caught right side. It turns. And they'll get him to the ground, but he got all the way down to the 30-yard line. And they convert on third with a gain of 22. Bortles. He'll rifle this one deep right side. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. Tremendous field position there and a perfect time to do exactly what they did. Take a shot at the end zone. And they went for the big play, just unable to complete it. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Watch left. Watch left. Here we go, to throw is Bortles. To his running back complete. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. Portals to throw on third and one. And Robinson with a big catch. And eventually brought down, but not before an effective use of the hurdle there allows him to pick up the first. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop him right around the one. A good run of six yards there. Gets him closer to the goal line with second down coming up. Portals to throw on second down. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. A great effort there. He scored on the ground and through the air. And the Jaguars had six to their lead. And the lead is now 24. Lambeau out to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Now the Patriot offense set to take over again. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah, yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> They'll bring one of the tight ends in motion left. On 
first down, Brady. Looking for Gronkowski, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 28. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage, they've all been excellent, and now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. And a great spot to start this drive from here. So after the INT, it's Bortles. They still can't get it. Now he's hit, and Bortles fumbled. It's loose. In today's NFL, most teams don't have as many goals for the game like we used to have where you checked off your boxes. But zero turnovers, that, that's a universal. And while it won't likely cost them in this game, they're going to regret the fact that they cough one up here. Yeah, their first blemish. They had mistake-free football prior. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. And he'll get to the 29-yard line, brought down there. At five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Time for a break. This one, all over but the shouting. We'll finish it after this. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Easy. Throwing on first down is Brady. His throw incomplete. Brandon Cooks, the receiver he was going after. And that'll bring up second down. And we just saw another example. These cornerbacks have played tight coverage all game long. Might start wanting to think about a few double, triple move routes to try and shift their guys free. They have you. And he loses the football a second time. Wow. That ball gets knocked free. But a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. New England on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third down and 12. Boy, and now they can't even get a playoff. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. New England on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 17. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go. From the gun, it's Brady. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Malik Jackson coming in to drop him for a loss of eight, and it'll be fourth down.
And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Now Brady got to have this one. Pressure gets to him and down he goes. Back at the four-yard line. Telvin Smith from that outside linebacker spot. He's able to get in there for a loss of nine. because the old school in me is not happy about this score this late, not necessary. But this is Madden, isn't it? Yeah. This, is how, this is how it works. Rub it in. Have a day. I mean, what, what does it matter? <laughs> These guys who are playing in this game, there are no feelings exactly. there. Exactly. They don't have to face the guy. Well, they might if they're in the same room going head to head. <laughs> but that's the about virtual it. guys on the screen don't have to face each other after this one. In that case, run it up. Here's Lambeau out to kick this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. Now the Patriots offense, they work their way back out onto the field. They are down big. They have not scored a single point. I don't know. Are they so defeated at this point? You just want to get in the locker room, get the heck out of here? That is one way to approach it. Sometimes coach say, that's it, okay? It hasn't worked all game. There's no sense in doing something now. Let's get out of here. No one gets hurt. But others will look at it and say, we still have an opportunity yeah, to do something. There's pride on the line. Exactly. You have pride on the line, execution as you look forward and, and, and get, get ready for your next game, and a message to your team. We're not going to quit. No matter what, no matter what the battle is, we're going to finish this thing out. Brady now on first down. Over the middle, it's Amendola. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense as they get it with 16 seconds remaining on the clock. On first and 10, here's Brady. An incomplete crisis averted. Almost picked. Instead, second down. He's got to be kicking himself right there. His team's already picked off two passes. That would have been the third in the game. And boy, they've really played well attacking the football. Second down following the incompletion. To throw again. Brady. And Cooks has it over the middle. And what are the whistles for? Timeout. So they'll stop the clock here in a game that's been decided in the closing seconds. Brady now on first down. Time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Yannick Ngakwe in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. So Charles are able to complete what so often seems to be elusive, a shutout in the NFL. And maybe what's fitting is they ended the game on the field, that defensive unit on the field. What an exclamation mark. And probably felt like they could go another 60 minutes without anyone putting points on the board against them. That's the confidence you gain throughout when you're pitching a shutout, and they're going to leave the stadium feeling like they're all 10 feet tall.
So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Jaguars are winners here as we say so long from Jacksonville.